Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this lecture is part of the first year fluid dynamics module. And this lecture is all about the atmosphere. Okay, so in this um, uh, lecture, we're going to learn about, first of all, the composition of the atmosphere, okay, which layers um, make it up, and also how temperature and pressure varies um, throughout it. Um, something called the International Standard Atmosphere, and I'll um, talk a bit more about that later on. Um, and then also um, equations for how you can calculate the pressure and density at given altitudes um, within the atmosphere for isothermal um, sections and also constant uh, lapse rate sections. So firstly, what's in our atmosphere? Well, um, this picture here shows, um, you know, a schematic of the different um, layers in the Earth's atmosphere. So there's four layers or spheres, obviously because they go around um, the globe. And the bottom one is called the troposphere. So that's where we live and that extends up to about 12 kilometers um, above us. And this is the main one that we're interested in terms um, from an engineering point of view. About 80% of the Earth's atmosphere is contained in the troposphere. And as I say, it's where we live, uh, where our mountains are, and where most of our um, commercial aircraft flies. The layer above from 12 kilometres up to 50 kilometres is the stratosphere. Um, we do have some aircraft going up um, into the stratosphere, but it tends to be more high performance aircraft. And the stratosphere and troposphere combined account for 99.9% .9 of the Earth's atmosphere. So don't be fooled into thinking that there's kind of um, uh, an evil, even distribution um, in terms of the atmosphere between these layers. There isn't. The air's getting, um, or the atmosphere is getting thin as you go up. Then you get up into the um, mesosphere, um, which is where you kind of see um, uh, meteorites um, striking the atmosphere, where you see those. And if you keep going up, once you get above the Kármán line, which is 100 kilometres above the Earth, and that's um, kind of the official um, boundary between... Um, out of space so when you're above that line you're officially in space and that's where our satellites are and um, other kind of weather conditions okay and what happens is as you go up through these um, different layers each layer is characterized by um, a change in temperature um, with increase in altitude and in some layers the uh, temperature um, there'll be an increase in temperature with altitude and for others, there's kind of a decrease um, with an altitude. And I'm not going to go for the reasons why um, in this lecture. Um, if you want to know, you can um, go and find out for yourselves. But we're just going to accept that, that they are for this the purpose of this lecture. So how do does the um, temperature change with altitude? Well, in the troposphere, um, this plot obviously shows you. So we've got temperature along the bottom axis. An altitude, um, so going up from the uh, the ground level up on the the y-axis, and you can see in the troposphere that if we start from um, ground level, so you know around about fifteen degrees or so, that the as we increase in altitude, the temperature in the troposphere decreases at a constant rate. Okay, now this rate of change of temperature is known as a lapse rate and is um, and we use the symbol uh, lambda. And if the um, temperature decreases with altitude, we have a positive lapse rate, as we can see in this layer, in the troposphere layer. But if we have a negative um, lapse rate, then the temperature increases with altitude, as we can see in the stratosphere. Um, you can see that here. But one thing to bear in mind, um, you can also see between some of the um, different spheres, so between the um, troposphere and stra the stratosphere, there's this um, line here of constant temperature. Or So in other words, uh, the temperature isn't changing with altitude, so it's isothermal, okay? So iso meaning the same, so it's not changing with altitude. And you get these kind of um, isothermal layers you can see at the top of each of the, or sorry, at the bottom of each of these layers. And so they kind of determine these almost like a pause. So that's the tropopause, and that'd be the um, stratopause, and and so on. And you find those as you go up um, through the through the Earth's atmosphere. 
And we'll talk about the equations of how you can determine the pressure at each of these points um, later on in the lecture. So because the composition of the Earth's atmosphere is um, quite difficult to, to predict, um, you know, we've got water vapour and um, dust and all that kind of things, the idea of an international standard atmosphere was agreed upon. And the reason for this is that you can, it's used to predict and compare um, aircraft performance using um, agreed um, average values of the properties in the Earth's atmosphere. And as I said, this is the International Standard Atmosphere, or ISA, and it's a standard model for the Earth's atmosphere. So what are the properties of the ISA? So if you look in your... Um, properties book, so Rogers and Mayhew's um, Thermodynamic and Transport Properties of Fluids, we take um, our international atmosphere, um, standard atmosphere, we take the temperature as 15 degrees um, at sea le at ground level. Um, obviously in the calculations we need to convert this into absolute temperature, so we need to take it, convert it into Kelvin. And if you did do that you'd have a decimal place, but for most calculations we can ignore um, the decimal place and just work to the nearest integer. The pressure um, at ground level is taken as um, 101,325 pascals, okay, and also the density of air is taken as 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. So these are the standard um, calculations you should use for um, uh, calculations at sea level, but how to calculate it as you go up, um, I'll show you in the next sections.